to see our pets every day at work. And so it's pretty awesome. Everyone you, brings pets uh, to if work. If you come to the Chewy office, I mean, the amount of we, we were, you know, we were thinking, how are we going to get any work done? And and how do you kind of keep all these pets in check? But believe it or not, it's it's everybody behaves and it just works. That so, sounds like sheer chaos. We've had, we've had, you know, besides dogs and cats, we've had pot-bellied pigs and we've had hamsters. Oh. And <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Leadership Next. The podcast about the changing rules of business leadership. I'm Alan Murray. And I'm Michal Evram. See, Chewy was founded as a food and supplies company. We would serve you your food. We would, you know, ship you your dog collars and beds and all of that stuff. But there's much more to a pet's journey than that, a pet's life cycle than that. There's an entire health vertical. There are non-healthcare services. And then what if, why just pet parents? Think about the community that services pet, right? You're, you're the veterinarian, the mm. groomer, the trainer, the dog park friend, mm. right? Looking for content, servicing pet, et cetera, et cetera. And we said, well, why should we only stand for customers? Let's stand for partners. Mm. And what that tells you is from a business mindset, what it was saying was we should be a B2C, a B2B company, et cetera. So if you put that together, Alan, you not only get a mission and purpose that people can get behind, you get the strategy of the organization. And at any point, you can look at that and say, well, where are you trending in fulfilling that, des- that, that this, this journey? And it's meant to be enduring. So over the last six years, we've really built out our health vertical. So we're very proud of that. So we've connected food supplies and health. We've built out B2C services, B2B services for veterinarians. And so we're super proud. And so when you, and we've just entered Canada as our first international foray. We all know e-commerce is a tough business. Um, just tell us a little bit more about your philosophy, the underlying philosophy for customer service and customer loyalty. You know, I'm a product of consumer tech experience forward companies, mm-hmm. Dell being one, you know, Amazon being the other. Mm-hmm. And so when I got to Chewy, right, I was like, well, great. It's just a customer service or customer care team. And this is the journey sometimes you, as a leader, need to observe and evolve to be able to truly assimilate through what is a gold nugget in the foundation or the growth of a company stage. And I looked at our customer care and I experienced it. And as I experienced our customer care, you know, I did not think about any customer care organization. I thought about Disney, my experience Mm -hmm. when I walked through a Disney park and how we feel in the way that you know, you, you just feel like you're a part of a dream world, like well, being welcomed. I compare Chewy to the best hospitality resorts in the way that you are served, in the way that you're treated, in the way that you're received, and in the way that you're, you're respected when you walk through the best hospitality resorts. So that's the mindset in the way that we approach customer service, right? So if I were to summarize this from a business point of view, I would say Chewy is, uh, you know, we are delivering the scale and convenience of e-commerce but at the best personalized service or a, a high touch personalized service, you should expect at the best local neighborhood pet store. Can you share the story real quick of um, this incident that kind of went viral where somebody's uh, a customer's pet died and you sent a message and uh, d- d- tell the story? We have what we call surprise and delight uh, moments uh, where we want to be with the customer's life cycle or journey through the highs and lows of pet parenting. And this moment that you're referring is a low of pet parenting when somebody's pet passed away. And when that happens, right, we we get to know, we send flowers, right? We send, because at that moment, we are sympathetic, empathetic. We send flowers, we send greetings, handwritten cards. And, you know, that moment is a very special moment because most companies will not invest, you know, X number of dollars to be able to pick up flowers to send to customers and be there, right, in that moment for them. And posts like these, that's not the only thing we do. We send you handwritten birthday cards. We send you welcome cards. We will send you surprise and delight. We work with over a thousand local artists where we will send you hand-drawn pet portraits, which you cannot buy from us. They will show up to your doorstep, surprise and delight. And let me tell you this. When you get a hand-drawn pet portrait of your beloved pet, I have you for life. On the customer service side, for a company that's so, you know, so much of your DNA and and your culture is around customer loyalty and this really like high touch customer service. You're talking about handwritten notes, like not a lot of e-commerce companies do that. How do you look at the opportunities with some of these AI powered chatbots, AI agents um, to help with customer service without diluting everything that you guys stand for. It is natural to assume that technology and personalization or technology and creativity are are conflicting with each other. 
And I think what we have to realize is that human beings are great at creativity. They always will be. And technology is great, is great at delivering scale. And so you have to marry these up smartly, right? Our, our local artists or our handwritten notes in a way that we assimilate through the language, right, is, is a very personalized mechanism that we are seeking to keep. At the same time, I can automate all of the segmentation of customers, the targeting of customers, the identification of those cohorts. I can also automate how I pick up the right portrait when a customer uploads a pet profile and pass it on to my artist pretty digitally and pretty seamlessly. So I've essentially eliminated process waste without really taking out creativity from the system. I want to, we're, we're developing something called uh, a tool like, uh, which is called CSR Buddy. It is meant to be a friend to the customer service uh, or the customer care team. And what, it's essentially a, a, a prompter tool. It downloads, it has all information about the customer. It has a knowledge base, which will marry content to, to let them have more intelligent conversations. We try not to hire from deeply ingrained CS contact centers. Because, because we, 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 because we have to untrain them to get them to yeah, unlearn the yeah. bad habits of getting the customer off the phone. Yeah. We want to pick up your phone in two rings or less. Right? And so we, we, we tell our agents, just have a conversation. 